Hello, so in this one, I want to do a Deadly Poison Claw build. I'm gonna do both physical and poison damage. The main difference between those is that on poison damage build, you want to pick up additional physical damage node on the Zodiacs in order to apply blood explosion. And on the physical damage build, you want to pick up additional poison damage on every hit in order to benefit from deadly poison link room that requires Venom. So these two points out of the way, because they are really important one. Let's get into the build. Early game skill board should look something like this. This is assuming that you're playing a poison, deadly poison claw. So additional poison damage. Water Shadow is the most important one. Without that one, your damage is gonna be really low. So keeping this, even if it's a yellow synth, but this one is a must. Confidence, Quick Attack, Slaughter, and Fine Weakness. Depending on what kind of daggers you're running, you might want to remove Quick Attack at some point, because reaching 5 attack speed with this skill is gonna be really easy, as the skill it itself has a base speed amplification. Plus, you generate plenty of poison energies just from the skill itself, so you're gonna cap your attack speed really quick. So if you want, if you have five attack speed, you can switch your quick attack to a more offensive choice, and that could be early into the game something like poison penetration, area effect, or elite slayer. Those three runes are gonna work really well. After that, for movement, you want to do roll with leap attack with the disarm. Illusion acts for fire energies, so you want to have extract on it and dampen resource cost. Everything on the skill board is linked as it should be, so keep that in mind. For seal, you want to use seal of condensed elements early. For defense, you want to use veil of protection and use wind whale for projectile damage taken decrease. For defensive seal, you want to pick up either elemental damage dampening, you can also pick up physical damage dampening, case resist or elemental resistances, that one depends on what you need the most at the time. I'm keeping Shout of Justice to remove your CC together with buff activation with crown control. I have linked with damp and resource cost but you don't have to. The benefit that you get out of damp and resource cost on Shout of Justice is not that big but as it stays on that spot and it's close to damp and resource costs, so why not? Shout of Provocation for Armor Amp and a little bit of damage multiplier. With that one you want to do Lingering Shout, Hushed Shout, Shout of Power with buff activation when hit, Enhance Effect and Increase Duration. Lingering Shout is not linked because I don't have a 6 link but you want it to be linked. With this many links you should be able to have more than enough Shout duration and cooldown. So basically you're gonna be able to keep it like 100% uptime. For defense and hands, you want to use Siphon Life with time acceleration and increased duration. For Fighter's Rot, you want to use Enhance Effect, increased duration and time acceleration. So that's how your skill board should look like early into the game. Zodiacs are kinda default on this one. This is for the poison build. So, Afros, Swamp for Poison Damage Amplification, Jewel for Melee Damage and Melee Damage Amplification, Leaf basically for Area Damage Amplification and Area Effect, Stem for Status Effect Rate, you want to have this because you're gonna be applying some of the status effects and this is really easy plus 8 status effect which is gonna help you a lot. And of course into elemental damage amplification. Elaborate attack just for flat crit chance and crit damage with a rainbow. Rainbow you can only you can have it early for movement speed and a little bit of attack speed. But when you start capping your attack speed, you can remove this node and, pick and spend those two points basically somewhere else. This is 
Breath is an important one. You want Annihilation for area effect and area effect damage amplification. This one is simple. Aim for as much elemental damage amp, so Thirst of Elements and the certification for area effect. This is an important one. You want to scale that area effect on this build. This one is kind of default for dual wielding. Damage amp and dual wielding. Severe pain damage amp and dual wielding. This one is for melee damage amp. Fighting Spirit and Wipe Up for Area Damage Amplification. I'm not picking up Certainty, even if it's 50 Area Effect, I think losing 15% Damage Amp is kinda a big deal. This is gonna be a huge loss on the damage side. So I don't suggest to pick up this one unless you can sacrifice some of the damage for more Area Effect for more Map Clear. And of course, one point for Power of Harmony. On Dagas, it's really easy to achieve those 200 stats. It's gonna be not a big deal. Then you want to pick up additional physical damage on every hit. With this node, you're gonna be able to apply Bleed. That means at some point you can pick up Blood Explosion. And this is additional lighting damage on every hit. This is an important one as you with this node You're gonna be able to apply shock and shock is actually really big for your damage. So I highly suggest this one For specialization you want to go with Dawn. I pick up convert mana. If you don't need convert mana You can just pick up Vigor and of course Palmer will hit with over Palmer. Strike Damage Amplification and Element Observer. At first you're gonna be able to spend only 7 points, but after completing the green quest in the Saluto, you're gonna be able to get plus 2, so you're gonna have 9, and you can pick up exactly like this. For third spec, it's Strike Damage Amplification, Area Damage Amplification, and HP Absorber Hit and HP Absorber Limit. This is an important one. When you pick up your spec 3, pick up this node first, as this is going to increase your survivability by a lot. This is how your skill board should look later into the game. So on Deadly Poison Claw, as Awakening, you want to pick up Source for area effect and poison damage amplification. This is a big one. On Warrior Shadow, you want to go for Source, Damage Amp, and Avery Effect. For Fighting Spirit, you want to go for Source, so Strength Damage Amplification and Spirit Stacks. For Iron Will, you want to go Origin for Melee Damage Amplification. And important thing to note is that use Iron Will if you have more than 23k HP. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the full benefit out of damage amplification. Keep that in mind. I'm using Mana Storm in here. You can do Mana Storm and awaken it to Swords or to Verity. Deadly Poison, you most important thing is that don't use it before you awaken it to Verity. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to inflict Venom. That means this, this link is not gonna work, as whenever you link it and awaken it, you lose a chance to apply Venom, you cannot apply it at all. That means you're not gonna get damage amplification against enemies affected by Venom. And you solve it by awakening it to Verity. To, to be able to inflict that Venom and to be able to get that damage amplification. Same goes with melee, melee damage amplification. You need to awaken it to Origin, otherwise you're not gonna be able to apply any dots. So these two runes, in order to use them, you need to awaken them first. Otherwise, you are screwed. I added Blood Explosion in here with Extract Energy and Dampen Resus Cost with Cold Damage, converted to Cold for some Elemental Damage Taken Decrease. 
But if you have enough damage taken decrease, you can convert it to any other element as you like. You can do lightning for status effect rate. That means you're gonna be able to apply your venom and bleed and other status effects much faster. After that, I added uh, decrease duration onto Fighter's Rat, but keep in mind that you need to reach certain breakpoints when the decrease duration becomes better. Basically, when skill rune effect becomes better than duration on your Fighter's Rat, that breakpoint is different depending on what items you are using. Another thing, I added Seal of Striking for Strike Damage Amplification, because at this stage, you should, you should have more than enough um, multiplier, so the strike damage amplification should be better. There are some different choices that you can make. I added Mana Storm, but if you're having problems with mana, you can switch it to additional poison damage, something like this. It's gonna depend on how much poison flat you have. If you don't have that much, additional poison damage probably is gonna be better. At the same time, you can use an elemental damage jump, but you need to remember that elemental damage amplification has the lowest value of elemental damage jump. That's a big thing. You can use concentrated area damage, which, ha which has the biggest damage jump in the game, but you're gonna lose a lot of area effects, so you might lose some um, time when doing maps, as area means more than damage at some point. For blood explosion to work, you want to pick up additional physical damage on every hit on your zodiacs, so you could start applying bleed, as bleed can only be applied when you're doing physical damage, so don't forget that. For physical deadly poison claw, you need to get yourself a Convert Physical Damage Link Rune and you want to pick up a Zodiac that gives you additional poison damage on every hit. Otherwise, Deadly Poison is not gonna work as it needs poison damage in order to apply Venom Stacks. And the rest of the skill board is good. There is nothing else you need to change. Physical Poison Claw, Zodiac-wise, is similar, but let's go over some of the changes. So, Afros is the same. You want to go into Forest. Jewel. Leaf. Root. Physical Distortion gives you status effect rate, which is a big deal. Flash. Rainbow. Breath. Dust, Stench, Artemis, Maggot for Palm of Harmony, the same. The biggest changes are right there. In the Carpenter, you want to go for Experienced Craftsman to pick up additional poison damage on every hit. That enables your Deadly Poison Link Rune. Keep that in mind, without this no deadly poison is not gonna work on your build. And Pharma just for 10% additional physical damage basically. For the spec, you want to go into Hama. And this is the first issue arises, is that Hama doesn't have convert mana. So you will need to somehow fix your mana issues, it's either belt or some unique. So it's area damage, powerful hit, desperate hit and damage amplification, HP absorbent hit, damage amplification and area damage amplification. For charms, I'm gonna suggest the easiest one and that's gonna be Alyssa plus Boreal. It doesn't matter what kind of damage type you're doing, those two are gonna work for any type of damage that you do. And then depending, if you do physical, you can go Hamal. And if you do poison, you can go Vespa. For the charms themselves, you want 
crit rate, crit damage, and the third affix is whatever you can find. For relics, again, I'm gonna keep it really simple. You can you can go caster first if you are doing physical damage, and pick up sensory stimulation with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. And for the passive part, you can pick up area effect. Then you can go into Sebda. It works for both. You can pick up Cash Resist if you are doing physical damage. And if you are doing poison damage, you can pick up elemental damage amplification with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. Either way, Sebda and Castor are really good choices because both passive effects are working very well on this build. And the active part you choose depending on on the damage type that you do. For the third one, I always suggest Pika, because the passive part has chance to deal double maximize damage on hit, which is a lot. If you're doing physical, you're gonna benefit more, and if you're doing elemental, you're still gonna benefit plenty out of this. And for the last one, you can do Boreal, as the last one can only have 15 levels, so you can get a little bit extra HP. Itemization, I'm gonna keep it simple. This is an authority dagger, but it doesn't matter. This is the only one I had. But what you do you want to know is that you're looking for daggers that has a critical rate of 11. As this is a critical base dagger basically. And 11 is max that you can have. On the rolls you want to focus for gear critical rate. This is the most important one. After that you can go critical damage, weapon damage multiplier, weapon damage flat, weapon speed. And I chose physical damage. So if you do physical damage, you can go for physical flat. If you're doing poison damage, you go for poison damage flat. Weapon speed might not be necessary for this build, because we have so much speed from the deadly poison claw itself. So instead, you can pick up hit rate or anything else. This is a perfect craft, but you don't have to aim for this. Just remember the priority that your critical rate comes first. For the neck you want critical damage implicit neck, for the rolls there is not much to do in here. On non-authority necklace you can get physical damage flat or physical elemental damage flat, depending if you do poison pick up poison damage flat. And for the multiplier it's physical damage multiplier or elemental damage multiplier. Then you can get some HPs and suffix part is up to you. You can get some stats, you can get some resistances depending on what you need the most. For the ring, you want to pick up a critical rate implicit ring, attack critical rate. For the affixes, you want to go for attack critical rate, critical damage. And then depending on what kind of damage you do, it's physical or elemental. Then attack speed multi. And I would say HP is probably the best one is here. And on the suffix part, you can pick up either stats or resistances, whatever you need the most. On the chest, it's simple. You go for the main defense multiplier. Then you can either go HP multiplier, HP flat, or instead of HP flat, you can pick up armor flat, depending on what you roll. And the suffix part is up to you. It's either resistances, if you want more offensive roll, you can pick up hit rate if you need that. And everything else is gonna be fine. On boots, my only advice is that you want to pick up movement speed first, as that's the most important one. Everything else is whatever you can muster. That's everything I wanted to say. If you have any questions, you can ask them on YouTube or find me on Twitch. By the way, the only reason I did this build is because I was playing Deadly Poison Claw in Season 1, and because it has a Warrior Shadow right now, I thought maybe I should play it again, as I'm basically done with my Poison Rain of Arrows build, so it didn't look like a bad idea. So if you're interested, you can watch me on Twitch while I'm pumping on this one. If not, GG's, and see you on the next one.